Hey guys, uh, Jeff with the Bennington and Elkhorn Valley Railroad here. Um, just want to share a revelation um, that I got from Roy Eltham. Um, <laughs> so I've uh, I don't I don't profess to be uh, an expert on these things. I've been at this for about two years. I've pretty much learned as I go. Um, a uh, acquaintance of mine um, suggested I get into uh, TCC with the NCE Power Cab, and I, and I love it. I'm glad I did. Um, it's worked out great. It's been really easy to set up. Um, but for the most part, I've, I've depended on everything that the, uh, the Power Cab could do, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, functionality that it would lead me through. Um, and uh, in my last video, I kind of talked a little bit about Excel Systems DCC decoders, a kind of very inexpensive option for DCC decoders, um, and they work great. I, I was always under the assumption, and I kind of read things um, supporting this assumption, that um, uh, they, they have ties to MRC, that the guy who's uh, marketing these Excel Systems DCC decoders did work with MRC to create those decoders a number of years ago, so they're kind of a old, little older technology, and I've read things to the effect that suggest that maybe they're not um, capable of some of the advanced consisting that, uh, that um, is supported today, um, and in particular some of the things that the NCE Power Cab uh, command control lets you do um, you know, very easily from, from, from their interface. Um, and so, yeah, one of the things I ran into um, was uh, when I would set up a consist, um, I was never able to, there's basically the distinction between old style and advanced consists. And um, I was able to set up a consist using the old style, but I was never able to set one up um, using the advanced consists. And the advanced consists, what, what the consideration is their old style consists only support two locomotives. Um, you know, which as I'm getting started, for the most part, that was great. But you know, as I start adding more locomotives, I think, boy, it'd be nice to have a, you know, a, a rear unit or a DPU or something. Um, you know, go to three or more locomotives. Um, that's where that advanced consist is required. And uh, and I was never able to get the uh, the advanced consist on the NCE power cap to work with these Excel system decoders. Um, I, I don't have any experience with some of the higher end decoders, if, it, if you know, they work seamlessly or not, but I, all I know is when I would follow the instructions on the NCE Power Cab command control to set up an advanced consist, it just wouldn't work. And I'll show you how I used to try that. So um, I've, got, I've got three locomotives, you can see in the other uh, frame there. Um, set up three SD70s, and what I would do is I would first I'd start with uh, you know the lead locomotive, so that's uh, two five 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 in this case, and then I would uh, I would select the setup in the consist uh, box there, um, and uh, and then it would give the option of advanced or old. Um, so yeah, for obviously first time I start doing this, I, I tried advanced. So that's the default, so I just press enter, and then it has a consist address. Um, it's defaulting to 127, um, so I go ahead and select that. And then the lead locos I put in, so 2555, that's my lead loco. The nice thing about leading you through this, it would then let you, you know, set the direction forward. Uh, the next one, just to verify here, is 12, or actually it's asking for the rear loco, which is 1201. It's actually facing rear, you know, back forward. So we'll put in reverse um, as the direction, and then I'll add in the middle. Um, that was 1202, right? 1202. So I'll add 1202 in, and its direction is also reverse. And then add loco. I just hit enter, and it's done. And then it shows a consist, kind of like the old style consist. It shows the lead locomotive, which I kind of like that because I, you know. I generally associate these with the lead locomotive. So anyway, then if I give it power, here's where I ran into problems. I nothing. I, it's it's not responding. So even though it's showing a consist there, nothing going on. Uh, it's it's not moving. I'm not showing any signs. The lights don't respond. Uh, um, so yeah, it, it 
by all mm -hmm. accounts, advanced consists is not working for Excel systems decoders. Um, so anyway, I was kind of complaining, sharing this uh, with um, with uh, with uh, Roy the other day, and um, and he shared a little bit of uh, give give me a little bit of revelation. Um, you know, I, I use the uh, I use the configuration variables for things like volume and control. You know, horn types. I've never actually looked at what kind of cap what the you know low level configuration capabilities are for a consist. So um, so he enlightened me about CV19. Um, so uh, CV19 essentially on if you set it on any locomotive. You can set that to a consist number, and then uh, that will effectively create a consist. Um, and there's really no limit to how many locomotives you could do that for. Um, so I thought, boy, that sounds really simple. Why can't I do that? Um, so yeah. So basically, what I do is the same thing. I would I would select locomotive. I select my lead locomotive two five five five, um, and then now I'm going to program. Uh, so I select the, the program button um, on, on the uh, power cab command control. Um, program on main. I'm going to go ahead and do that since I've already got my, my number assigned. I can identify it on the main. So I just hit enter. It defaults to my currently selected locomotive, which is 2555. And then I'm going to hit 2 to, uh, to actually update a, a CV configuration variable. I'm going to update 19, the one that Roy told me about. And then what you do, yeah, you basically put in a, uh, um, a 1 through 127. Uh, now, one of the things to keep in mind is, uh, is so yeah, direction, how do you handle that? Uh, Roy said that the high bit, um, in this particular case, 8-bit uh, value is 128. Um, is what controls whether it's forward or reverse. If it's not set, if, it, if the high bit is not set, um, then it's, uh, it's going forward. If it's set to 128, so that, that last bit of value of 128 is set, um, then it's, it's uh, configured to be reverse. So if you're not a computer person, the easy way to think of this is, um, so come up with your consist number, uh, the easy one is one, and then if the locomotive, and, and that's going to be going forward by default, if you want your locomotive then to be saying that you're going reverse, then just add 128. So that high bit value is 128. So 1 plus 128 is 129. Um, if, uh, you know, if, if you've got, uh, if you want to add a second consist, the consist number 2, again, just add 128. So that's 130. So instead of storing a consist number of 1, in the case of consist one, if the locomotive, the locomotive you're programming is going backwards, just add 128 to the one to give 129. So in this particular case, the first lead locomotive is going forward. I'm going to enter value of one. Then of course it asks if I want to program another CV num. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just hit escape. So I'm done programming that one. Next, my second locomotive is 1202. So I'm going to select 1202. And I'm going to program, program on main, locomotive defaults to 1202, again, program CV, 19, and I'm going to set again, I'm going to set the value to, oh, I'm sorry, just about screwed things up here. I'm going to set this one to 129 because this locomotive is pointed backwards. So let me go back, I'm going to have to get back into it again, program on main, 1202, CV, 19. I'm going to set a value to 129. So again, that's consist number 1 plus 128 to set the high bit, which gives me 129. That's going to tell it that it's going reverse. So then I escape out of there. I'm going to select my last locomotive, which is 1201. I'm going to program, program on main, defaults to 1201. Number select 2 to program a CV. I'm going to program 19 again, the CV. And again, this locomotive is also backwards, so I'm going to, it's going to be the consist 1 plus the 128. It's 129. And escape to get out. So now I'm, I'm left on locomotive 1201. So it's a little bit different here now. Is instead of, uh, instead of, you know, 
using a consist on 2555, the, the lead locomotive, um, I'm actually going to select the loco number and I'm going to give it a 1. And 1 ends up being the uh, that number 1 consist number that we put in the CV19 uh, variable. Uh, so now I am I've selected that uh, I've selected that consist. So now let's see I lost my screen. Let's see what happens when I give it some power. There you go. It's they're all moving as a as a unit. I have a consist of three locomotives there. Backwards. So we have a. Uh, we have a consist of, of three locomotives. Now, the other thing that, that I would have ran into, again, without Roy, Roy's help here, is, uh, is things like the headlight. Um, so I can't see, I don't even think, currently when it's on the consist here, uh, if I select headlight, nothing's happening. If I, if I uh, go back and select my loco of uh, the lead loco 2555, then I can turn on, uh, I think you can see, I can turn on the, uh, the headlight. Oops, I'm hitting the recall button. There's the headlight button. There you can see. So now the headlight's on, but I had to do that for that individual locomotive. Um, how, do I do, how do I coordinate that? How do I do it as a consist? Um, well, Roy shared another CV value, and that's 21. Um, Right now, it defaults to zero in CV21 for the, each of the locomotives, which basically says each of them act independently. If you put a value of one inside of the CV21 variable, um, it will actually coordinate. Uh, and one is just a flag; it's not the actual consist number. So, if your consist is one or two or five or ten, uh, you would still put in those locomotives in the CV21 variable. You'd still put a one. And that basically is just a flag that tells the consist that uh, hey, when uh, when that consist um, gets a command to turn the light on, turn on the lights of all those locomotives. They'll all be listening if their CV21 value is one, and and the consist gets a instruction to turn on the light. They'll all turn their lights on. So let's try that. So again, I'm on locomotive two five five five. I'll go uh, hit program, program on main, defaults to 2555. I'm going to hit 2 to program a CV, put in the CV number of 21, and then I'm going to put in a 1. And then I'm going to get out of here. And I'm going to select my next locomotive, 1202. I'm going to program, program on main, 1202, CV value, CV value num 21. I'm going to give it a value of 1. Get out of there. Then I'm going to select the loco 1201, which is on the rear. Hit program. Program on main. Defaults to 1201. Hit uh, program a CV value. CV value number 21. And I'm going to put a 1 in there too. And escape out. So now I basically have told each of those three locomotives that any instructions that I get on that consist they're assigned to uh, follow that instruction. So I'm going to select loco 1 again to get me back to my consist, consist number 1. And now I'm going to uh, go ahead and, and hit the light here. And as you can see, I think you can at least see in the video the second, the second locomotive. Here I'll pull forward a little bit here. Where is he? There it is. Yep, you can see the third one there too. So there it is. Now I hit the headlight button when I'm on the consist number one and they all go in synchroni synchronization. They're all coming on and off. Um, so yeah, Roy Eltham got 11. He, yeah, he set me straight. Now I know how to uh, um, do advanced consists with this XL Systems DCC decoder, which doesn't seem to respond to the consist setup you know, capabilities of the NCE power cab command control, which is fine as long as, you know, there's there's a CV way to program it. Uh, so now you know, like I do, what that is. Um, if you didn't know already, I'm probably the only one that doesn't know. I could be, this could, I could be the only audience for this to remind me in the future when I forget, because I forget things really easily. Um, 
So that's um, really all I was going to share. The only other thing I have to say, and this is for Nancy, if she's ever listening, um, she may not have, uh, she may have got bored by this point, <laughs> may not be listening at this point. I kind of lied to you because I said, oh, hey, then if, because she was kind of worried about doing it herself, um, if it doesn't work, you can always go back to select loco, say 2555 individually, and you can run that individually. Well, here's the trick. See, I've got this thing maxed out at, at speed 28. It's not doing anything over here. Here's the thing. What I figured out is when that CV19 value is set to a consist number, it will not operate by anything other than that consist. So unfortunately, what you have to do then is, so in the case of 2555, um, I'm going to go program again. 2555 CV value select 19 again what I have to do is set it back to zero what it was originally before I did all this and then get out of here and I'm gonna uncouple it here from the second one and only now can he actually advance on his own so that's the only little bit of a trick that to keep in mind is if you do set that CV19 value to a consist number, um, each of those locomotives, when you pull them off the consist, you need to reset that CV19 value back to a zero if you want to use that locomotive individually. So that's a little bit of a gotcha, but overall I'm just happy that with these Excel systems decoders that I can actually effectively create an advanced consist by, uh, um, uh, by using the CV19 value. Um, so again, um, I, I thank Roy Eltham for, sh for sharing that, um, really good information from him. Uh, maybe I'm the only one that didn't know this, but, um, hope it comes in handy to somebody. Um, so thanks for watching.